Galen. Yes, I am. Galen, I'm Diane Ritz. Oh, Diane, I'm nice to meet you. Here. Lovely, yes, yeah, so glad to meet you. Yes, sorry about that confusion. I'm, anyway, uh, downloading, sending, filling in. I, I thought I had done it, but anyway, I do have hard copies with me. and. Good. I'll take the hard copies. Okay. The, I got everything else, but the one, that form, the information sheet. Okay. You must have, you might have saved it as some program that I Yeah, have. maybe, maybe. And I was a little uncertain with the other forms, the TD1 or the TD1 Ontario. You, on the one, you had a, an amount put in there, and the other, it was kind of asking me. Right, because the... Oh, thank you. That's lovely. I think, let's see. So... Yeah, no, I understood that. I was just wrestling with, with they were asking about other incomes and stuff. And so I didn't know if I would have to ask my accountant about that or if I could just fill it out, the minimum or whatever. Minimum is good. At this okay. Year. Okay. What you would normally ask is if it was in September and you started, you mm -hmm. already had a job. Mm -hmm. Or Canada Pension and EI and all a bunch of other things. Right. In your income tax, it's now also rated. Okay. Okay. That's why the question... Right. Yeah. Right at this point in time. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Not too bad, thanks. thanks. I'm so sorry about your mom, honey. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I really, I mean, obviously I'm sad, but it, I was blessed with two mothers. I have a, had an adopted mother and...
Partner with the world, live out our faith, discover God within. Good morning, my name is Dennis Watson, and I am your presider this Easter morning. Welcome to the folks from both Trinity and Forest Hill United Churches joining us online, and to all of you here at the Nest this Easter morning. Now we will begin our worship service this morning with a very beautiful and touching piece of music called P.A. Yezu, written by Andrew Lloyd Webber. In times of difficulty and struggle, in other words, in our own Good Fridays, Jesus comes to grant us mercy and rest. Even for the woman that first Easter morning who came to the tomb, while it was still dark. They had no knowledge of the resurrection and the light that it would bring into their lives, but they believed in the power of even a dead Jesus to heal their broken hearts. As tempting as it may be, and I know it will be tempting, we ask respectfully that you not applaud following this musical offering, but rather allow it to sink deep into your soul. Let it resonate within your heart and mind. Let it amplify your heart and mind, but not your hands. During a few moments of silence following this musical offering, we will allow you to experience how the music speaks to you in whatever darkness may haunt your heart. The English translation will appear on the PowerPoint.
Thank you, and thanks be to God for the beauty of music and voice combined. And now let us hear our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we gather on the traditional territories subject to land and treaty claims of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Chinoten or Attawandaran peoples. The stones of guilt and regret lay in front of the tomb where we might find a resurrected hope for reconciliation. Who will roll away the stones? We acknowledge that reconciliation is bound with the climate crisis and its effect on indigenous peoples around the world. Because of their close relationship with the land and its resources, there can never be reconciliation while we continue to hurt Mother Earth. We seek reconciliation in all its forms. From the sadness of loss to the confusion of the stone rolled away and an empty tomb to the realization that Christ is risen, we enter now into the joy of Easter with our choir in Troit, Awake the Harp. Reverend Galen and I are going to uh, jump in here. Good morning. The first thing we have to do, the very important thing we have to do, is now that Easter has come, we have moved out of the night and into the light. Gary, yes? Um, one time, yeah? I my house. Yeah? Wow. And then there were all around my house, even in my Emily's bike folder. Wow, this is not where, going, where I'm going, no. <laughs> uh, Want to hold on to that? And Grace, where's Grace? There's Grace is like there. Now, Oliver, maybe you can help there. And we need, there, maybe you guys can share that one. Maybe you girls could share that one. Okay, and we have over here, oh! Sorry, guys, you lose out. Over here. Okay, now uh, the lighter. I know that Dawn was going to give us some light. So we need to bring some light here, okay? And so let's see. Actually, we're going to get some tall kids to light the Christ candle over there. So, Oliver, can you two guys light the Christ candle and these candles here? And I'm going to get the other candle lighters to come over here by this light over here. Come on over here. So if you girls could light the very top one. Oh, I'll give you some. There we go. Maybe Reverend Galen can direct you over there with the very topped ones. Come on, come on. And then Grace, you're going to get you. Oh, I'm going to pull this up here a bit. And Grace, we're going to get you to light one over here. You might have to step on the step two. We just need to get perfect. Perfect. one of those lit. 
Okay. Oh, didn't light at all. You got it. That's good. It's going. There we go. Good. Maybe Reverend Gail, you can help get over here. Maybe need the steps. Grace, did you do that? Now, just pull this down a bit. Did you get yours candled it? Grace, yeah, just pull that little lever down. Great. And so we're going to get you to come up here okay. and light a candle. Be very careful with that. Don't go there we go, up there. here. All righty. Look at that. Has that been? There we go. Good. You want to light this? Yeah, you can light And that. actually, you know what? We got some more left. Grace, why don't you light a candle? Oh, well, maybe there's some there other folks. Over here, we'll get you to light a candle because I don't think you got a chance, did you? Okay, you need to, yeah, you can put the egg down for a second, then we'll get over here and light a candle. They're one of the ones that's okay, left. Let's wait and, see if and who hasn't lit a candle yet? Oh, these guys over here haven't. Can we, have you girls had light a candle? We okay, we're going to let this, these guys light a candle. Okay, we're going to switch spots. Oh, you to push that up there? There we go. You come up this way. Do you want to come up on the step? All right. Go on the step. Okay. You need, okay. probably need to blow it out. There we go. There we go. Maybe the other ones that are left over. Now, Beautiful. do you kids have your stones with you? Yes? Could you run and get your stone? Could you run and get your stone? Yeah, if you haven't got your stone, run and get your stone. Okay, great. Any other stones? Okay. Make sure you get your stone. You got your stone? You got your stone? You got your stone? You got your stone? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. I'm glad you got your stone. I got my stone too. And I have a mic over here. Now, while we're talking, what the adults are going to do with your stone, because I know you've been wondering, what am I going to do with this stone other than throw it? <laughs> and you can do that as long as you have no sin. The line starts over here. Right by MJ. Okay. So, as, the, as we're talking to the kids, what the adults are going to do is the adults, you more than the kids know what stone is in your life. The thing in your life that you hold on to, you don't want to hold on to it, you hold on to it, you'd like to have it rolled away. You'd like to get rid of it. It could be an old grief, an old hurt, an old uh, death. Uh, it could be something you're trying to do in your life and you can't seem to do it. Something you need help with. Something you need help with to get rid of or to bring into your life. So with one word, put that on your stone. And if you don't have a marker, wait for a second, because there should be markers spread out here. Um, and so once you're finished, hold your marker up and pass it along to other people. OK, kids. So while they're doing out that, now did you hear that instruction? Is there anything tough in your life? You know, if you marker, we'll, ha we'll have to get a marker when for that. Gail, can you snatch yeah. some sure. markers? Oh, there's one there. Now, kids, do you have anything in your life that you find very hard? Really hard to do? What, what's hard in your life? Um, can I help you? Is there a word you want to write on your mark? Drawing. That's really hard Drawing? To do. Okay. Any, anything tough in your life? Anything hard things? Okay. Any other tough things? You don't have any tough things? Trying to, be, uh... Trying to do it from a handspring. What was that? Trying to do it from a good handspring. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you want to have a friend and they don't want to be friends with you. That's a tough thing. Yeah. Doing a headstand. Doing a headstand. That's a tough thing. Hmm. Okay. Dealing with my brothers. Dealing with your brothers. <laughs> I got brothers. I know what you're talking Wait, about. We're, we're them Any them other tough things? Tough things? Okay. Anybody else need a marker to write on? Well, sometimes, you know, there, things are so tough that you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. And so you need help to get that tough thing done in your life, to have it moved on that stone. We're going to call that tough thing a stone. And the problem is we, we often we need a marker over here. Um, we, is there a marker here? Oh, there's a marker there. A couple of markers. You want to grab a marker up there? So what we're going to do is we're going to help people move their stone. Yep. You need a stone? You know? He's got yeah. One time, the other house, there was no Easter eggs. No Easter eggs. 
Man, that's a tough stone. So if you could move this thing by yourself, you would move it. But because you can't move it by yourself, you need help. And this is what we're going to do this morning is we are going to get a bunch of baskets and you are going to collect up all the stones that are in the congregation. So you take a basket and you put it at the end of the row and people are going to pass that basket along and they're going to fill the basket and bring it back. And then once we have all the stones, we need a couple of people to bring up the choir stones because the choir's got big stones. Um, <laughs> Then, then we're going to bring those baskets, all these stones together, and we're going to pray about God helping us to move those stones, okay? So could you grab a basket? Everybody trying to get a, grab a basket. We've got baskets here. Could you grab a basket? And once you grab a basket, um, you want to go up there to start to get the choir going? And go up there and get the choir going? Now take a basket and go into the congregation and pass the baskets along. And if, yeah, pass them along. And so the adults can put the baskets in. So look at, wait, wait on the end of a pew and you'll get a basket and then you'll help pass the next basket, okay? Come up here, come on, guys. Let's get the baskets. Baskets going this way. The basket's going to come this way. Yeah. Well, these people need theirs. Do you get your stones up there? Oh, okay. Bring the basket this way. And when you see a basket coming, then hand it to the next pew. Oh, that's going to be a full basket. You can bring it up front. We'll get it. It'll come back this way. So when the basket is really heavy, bring it up front. Oh, okay. Let's bring it up here, perhaps. All right. We just put it up on the table. Ah, hello. Yes, put your stone in there. Yeah, that's right. You got to put your stone in there too. Yeah. There we go. Okay, just put a, you could draw a, draw a picture on it. Yeah, put them on the on here. Let's put them on the on the table. Okay, great. And if you've got yours, if you've got a picture or something on yours, then um, put it your stone in the basket. Okay, put your stone in the basket. That's okay. Bye bye, bye bye, rock. Looks like there should be some bunch of stones out there still. Oh, good. Yeah, put her. Sometimes people put the marker in there. That's probably good to have the marker in there because adults will just start using those markers and playing with them all through the service and they won't pay attention. Oh, oh could you guys get the baskets and bring them up front, guys? You big guys? Oh, oh yeah, and you could probably. Here's another one. Okay. We got some more baskets back there. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you. That's a good one. Oh, in the balcony. Did someone collect the ones in the balcony? Oh, let's go help out. Go help out. They'll need more than one basket up there. I know those people. They need more than one basket. I notice they're not over here by MJ, so I know that there's a basket needed. What, right, okay, right there. Don't throw them down. <laughs> this could go very bad very quickly. All right. Let's leave them right up there. That's it, Grace. Thank you. Ugh. Oh. Oh, that's a nice big basket. It's not full, no. Here, we're going to, while we're waiting, we'll put a few more rocks in there because a few more stones, because this is a pretty full basket. There we go. All right, the last of the stones cometh. Okay. All right, let's just put them on the altar here. Ted's supposed to write. Ted's supposed to write anything. Oh, no, that's good. We're good. What's Ted's supposed to write? He doesn't know. Oh, we're good. What's Ted's supposed to write on his rock? He oh, he doesn't. Oh, Ted's going to get his rock. Okay, yeah. Ah, that's a, yeah, that's, a, not a, that's not a stone. That's probably a, 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 an elastic God's telling us something, but I don't know what. Okay, so these stones, 
These stones have bothered people perhaps for years, maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years. These stones have been in someone's life and they could not move it by themselves. We are going to help that stone move. Are you ready? Are you ready? Can you do this? Okay. So I want you to pick a basket. Pick a basket. No, don't grab it. Just pick it. Come on over here. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on over here. And I want you to put your hands over the baskets. Just put your hands over the baskets. Right there. There's one over here. Then, then. Okay. Ella, come on up here, Ella. Come on over here. Come on. All right. I see a basket that needs Ella's help. This basket here. Put your hands over the baskets. And let's say, come on over here, Ella. Ready? Dear God. Help us move the stone we cannot move alone. Amen. Great. Now, hand the stones back. That's right. You don't know where they came from. Just hand the stones out to the people in the congregation. Yes, you want to bring up them to the choir? There we go, Ella. <laughs> Hand the stones back. <laughs> oh, I need a stone. I need a stone. Okay, Ella, do you want to help hand out some stones? There we go. Hand out a stone. Did you get some stones yet? Oh, over here. Ella, please. Diane and... Be- I haven't got, haven't got any uh, stones yet. Can you hand them a stone? And did you get a stone yet? <gasps> no stones over here yet. No stones here yet. Over, over here, we need some. Over there, Reese, right there in the middle. I think there's some stones needed here. <sighs> have, has everybody in the choir got your, uh, a stone? Gary, back there, have you got a stone? Ah, uh, you don't look like you were stoneless. Okay. You're f- are you finished, Grace? They're all supposed to... We should have enough stones. <laughs> Grace, you have any stones left? I think there's a few. How many up in the choir don't have a stone yet? How many choir members don't have a stone yet? Gary, you don't have, do you have a stone? No stone? Well, you got a stone? You got stones, okay. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh. Uh, looks like they got some stones. You got your stones now? All right, how about in here? All right, Jean. You got one? You need two more. All right, here we go. We got stones. Anyone else need stones? Oh. Yeah, they're, ha- they're heavy when you get stones together. <laughs> you don't get your own back, and there's a, just one over here. We need one stone over here. <laughs> oh, did everybody in the balcony get one? All right, looks like it. All right, you need two more in the balcony? Oh, all right. And kids, did you get a stone? No. No, you just kick a stone. You don't choose it. Just take a stone. Guys, you get a stone? Where? Okay, great. Good. You get upstairs? Did you get one of your did you get a stone? Okay, good one. Oh, you get three. Oliver, do you have a stone? You better give a stone. Doesn't matter. Okay. Are the kids back yet? We need a stone? Oh, we have two, one stone here. Come where we need it. Galen will point out there. Oh, in the back there, we need two stones? Oh, all right. So here's the mystery. As we're getting the last stones, here's the mystery. Is that 
You don't know whose stone this is. But you can be absolutely, positively, without a doubt, sure that it's somebody's stone. And so this week long, not just the kids, but you too, take that stone and pick it up, whether it be in the morning, in the afternoon, evening, maybe three times the day, and pray God will move this stone. And somebody in this congregation is praying for you and your stone. And that is Easter. So what I'm going to, we're going to do right now is we're going to, what's the next part, uh, Gail, do you have any idea? What's that? Do you want to read the scripture from Mark? Oh, yes. So from our house to Mark chapter 16, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they could embalm Jesus. And very early on Sunday morning as the sun rose, they went to the tomb, and they worried out loud to each other, who will roll back the stone from the tomb for us? So do now we have an answer. Who's going to roll away the stone? You are. All right. Head off to the Sunday school as we sing our intro. And hold on to your stone. <laughs> what I should have written on my stone. How disappointed I am the ion doesn't stop between the lectern and the choir loft. I can get awfully winded. Let us carry on with our service with our call to worship. And our call to worship this morning is based on the United Church's new creed. And I begin. We are not alone. We live in God's world. Hallelujah! We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And now I would invite Reverend Galen to please come forward for the lighting of our prayer candles and the passing of the peace. I feel like this is a little bit of a test for a newbie to remember which candle is which. But it doesn't really matter which is which. We light all of these candles, again, symbolically, really, for the ways in which we support one another through prayer. Like the stones that we hold, 
We offer our prayers for one another and for the world. So let us begin by lighting our candle for the environment. And particularly at this time of the year, I think we are so aware of the beauty of the earth, how it is coming out of its time of dormancy, and we see new life springing up all around us. And so we give thanks for that. Following our orders, so to speak, from Good Friday, this candle we light for those who are grieving. And in particular this day, we think of the family of uh, Bob Foles, a longtime choir member here at Forest Hill. And we pray for his family at the sad time of his death and passing. We trust that he is at peace. And speaking of peace, we light this candle seeking and praying for and hoping for peace in a world that seems so torn apart at this time. We are so aware of so many who suffer because of conflict and war. And we light this, prayer, this next candle of prayer for our community, for our fellow churches and in our area this week we are praying for the Gray Dufferin community of churches. And I have to add, as we pray not only for our own community of churches, I'm aware that uh, there has been some concerning news about Pope Francis' well-being and health. So as a sister church to the Roman Catholic Church that is worldwide, we pray for their Pope Francis. And we move from that time of darkness into the light. We are hopeful for peace. We are comforted by the presence and prayers of others around us. And we move to a time of celebration. This Easter morning, Christ is risen, hallelujah. And we also celebrate with families here in our congregation. For Mary and Bev Gordonier, for the birth and safe arrival of their granddaughter, Aurora Sophia Nevsky. And we also lift up this prayer of celebration, Wayne and Linda Nelson, with the arrival of their granddaughter, Kinsley Kate Creamer. Nothing more celebratory than new life, and especially on this day, this day of our Easter morning. May God hear the prayers expressed and those that are unspoken as well this day. Amen. And now we have our time for our passing of our peace. Now what some of you might not know is I actually began my ministry, one of my field placements was actually doing ministry with the deaf. And so there was a time when I was a little more fluent in sign language than what I am now. It's like any language, if you don't use it, you lose it. But I must say that this is certainly a sign that I would have remembered fairly well. So we are going to, as our passing of peace to one another, we are going to say Christ is risen. So Christ, thinking of the nails that were in his palms, Christ is risen. So we'll try that again. Christ is risen. So if you'd like to face the person next to you or close by you and offer them, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. And one last time, Christ is risen is risen. Hallelujah. Good morning. My name is Rhonda Brill. I will be sharing our Easter scripture. What is the heaviest thing you have ever lifted? We picture the stone that sealed Jesus' tomb as larger than a person, immovable if not for those angels that appeared in the garden that Easter morning. That seems unlikely since Jesus' friends who went to the tomb that morning were prepared to open it up again and anoint the body 
which they hadn't had time to do before the Sabbath. Their sorrow was the real immovable stone. What could lift the weight of such grief and loss? Let us join the women on their way to the tomb in this reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 1 to 12, the message translation. At the crack of dawn on Sunday, the women came to the tomb carrying the burial spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in, but once inside, they couldn't find the body of the master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then out of nowhere, it seemed two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down in worship. The men said, why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days rise up? Then they remembered Jesus' words. They left the tomb and broke the news of all this to the eleven and the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, mother of James, and the other women with them kept telling these things to the apostles, but the apostles didn't believe a word of it, thought they were making it all up. But Peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. He stooped to look in and saw a few grave clothes, that's all. He walked away puzzled, shaking his head. Let us thank God for this scripture and look for the resurrection in our hearts and lives. Amen. And now, the Nest Choir will share our anthem.
Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts and the actions of our hands be acceptable in your presence. Amen. It's my belief that um, every Easter service ought to begin with a taste of Good Friday. And congregations who don't try to do something on Good Friday or at least have a Good Friday and Easter is, is robbing the members. And I say that because each and every one of us, each and every one of us experiences Good Friday after Good Friday after Good Friday in our own lives. And each one will leave a stone behind covering the openings of our hearts. And in the story today that we heard in the scriptures, there were several places where we could see stones that I think most of us can relate to. The first stone was when Mary and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women were on their way to the tomb filled with grief, bowed down heavy with grief, and the need to do something, anything, sorry, anything to alleviate the feelings that are left in the wake of death. Often for us, the, those feelings come forth in questions. This, I should have said more. I should have said I loved you. Or, why them? Why now? Or was there anything I could have done, anything at all that could have changed the course of what happened? Now, luckily, we have rituals that have been evolved over thousands of years that help us to show up physically in those times. But the rituals only take us so far to deal with the emotional and spiritual upheaval. And even when... Even when the pain of grief has receded like a great cold glacier, <laughs> there will be stones left behind. The second, the second stone that uh, we see in this scripture is, is the stone of self-doubt. The women, before they even get to the tomb, begin to ask, who will move the stone for us. Who will roll it away? Self-doubt enlarges whatever difficulty we're dealing with now or fear we're going to deal with. Self-doubt sows the seeds of shame and the feelings of worthlessness that often lead to addiction. Self-doubt does not have to be grounded in reality. The women asked the question while it was still dark, before they got to the tomb, before they could assess the true extent of the problem or even the possible hope that lay beyond. They didn't see it. So it does not necessarily have any root in reality. The third stone is one that we refer to today as gaslighting. When we do not believe the experience of other people. So Mary and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women keep telling the disciples what they have found on that morning. And the disciples just didn't believe it. Can't be true. And it, and it made me wonder, how often do we lay stones at the feet of other people because we just, we just don't believe their experience. This culture that has been a great blessing to us but a burden to others. And we can't believe that because that's not our experience. We, we've been blessed. Young black men who were pulled over by the police in a disproportionate number of times, well, we... We reason they must have done something wrong because that's not what happens to us. So time and time again, we fail to appreciate somebody else's experience. No, 
You must be wrong. You must be imagining things. And the fourth stone is a little less obvious. It is a stone that happens or that occurs when we have two conflicting realities that we cannot seem to bridge. Peter, Peter that morning knew that Jesus was dead. That's a cold reality. But he went to the tomb, and when he entered into the tomb, it was, it was empty. There was, there was no body. And that's another reality. And it really is only the mystical that can bridge these two very different realities. But we place a stone, often called logic, in between. So, four very different stones. And yet, I believe, a very similar answer to each and every one of these stones. And the answer is that we do not have to face these stones alone. You don't have to face the stone alone. As a matter of fact, as part of a community of faith, not like-minded, we don't have to be like-minded to be in a community of faith, but a community of the compassionate. Perhaps people who have traveled a particular road before and can tell us, these stone, it can be moved. And encourage us to move the stone. When we come to the, the issue of um, the truth, about gaslighting and so on. Uh, next slide, please. In the Holy Currencies uh, schema, there are the pro, uh, uh, philosophy that we follow here, and I'm, I'm afraid, I know we've got some guest people here today who don't know about our Holy Currencies, but in the Holy Currencies, you'll notice that in the green is the currency of truth. And, and the definition from the Holy Currencies program of truth is ten eyes, or five sets of eyes, looking at a problem at a table. And because there are five sets of eyes on the table, that means that there's five different perspectives and at least five answers to the same problem on this table. And that's truth. When we look at whatever it is that is the stone at the foot of our feet or at the opening of our hearts, but look at it from other perspectives. And, and quite often, we're not, our perspective is not enough. We need to hear perspectives from other people about how that stone can be moved. So from a variety of perspectives comes wisdom. And you know that if you're at Tim Hortons and sitting at a table and there's only one perspective at that table, you don't got the truth. You have one perspective, but you don't have the truth. Israel believes they have the truth in how they are treating Gazans, Palestinians. And they are not listening to the growing chorus of the world telling them to stop. That this will not lead to peace. Starvation does not lead to peace. Bombing civilians does not lead to peace. They need to hear other perspectives. And finally, this whole sense of logic that often gets in the way, I think what we, saw, what we think of as being logic is, is really often a cultural construct. The biggest one I know is around race. It had become more obvious now that the idea of race, different races within the human species, is an invention. It doesn't actually exist. There are no races within humanity. But at one time, from superficial observation and the need to make somebody different than us, whoever us might be, whoever they might be, we, humans, invented race. 
But we know now that genetically speaking, that there is greater variation within what we would call a race than between what we call races. It's a cultural construct. And this made me wonder, particularly on this day, if death is a cultural construct. A construct that helps us deal with a lack of knowledge around life. Not death, but life. We, we see a body that ceases to breathe and we believe, well, that's the end of life because that's all we see. Is it? Just because we can't see it, does it not exist? When Peter enters into the tomb on Easter morning, his heart and mind is open to a kind of life he has never seen. And I think that's the definition of Easter. When our hearts and minds are open to a kind of life we have never seen. A kind of life where there is no shame, where there is no worthy, worthlessness, where there is no prejudice. A kind of life when we seek out the opinions of others to grow our wisdom. A kind of life where there is peace among these warring peoples. A kind of life where we never, ever have to face problems alone. That life exists even though we have not yet seen it. And this week, as you pray for the rocks in somebody else's life and feel somebody praying for the rock, the stone in yours, perhaps you will see it. Amen. We move toward communion by seeing the hymn one bread, one body, number four hundred and sixty seven in the hymn book. Four six seven or on the PowerPoint.
We invite you to this table, and by the way, it's the red mic. <laughs> uh, we invite you to this table this morning, knowing that this is not my table. Is it your table, Linda? Not, no? not our table. It's Jesus' table. And he invites all who are hungry and thirsty, regardless of whether you believe in Easter or whether you doubt, whether you know faith absolutely positively or if you are just holding on to the smallest thread of it. This table is for all, including you and us. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Lift up your hearts. We lift your hearts up on. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let's celebrate this irrepressible life. Let's open our hearts to the joy and wonder of infinite possibilities, of unquenchable hope, of eternal resurrection. We celebrate. We raise our voices in song and our hearts in worship and thanksgiving to the God who lives. Resurrection happened because Christ was first prepared to die, defying death so that we oh, might... Second. Hold on. Music. <laughs> because Christ was first prepared to die, defying death so that we might have hope in new, in new life. God, resurrection is not what we expect in our world. On the face of things, life seems to be under threat. Our earth is grieving. Our families are struggling. Nations are at war. The innocent suffer. And the light of our hope is growing dim. We need the stone to be rolled away. We need resurrection in our lives, not just in Christ. Forgive us. And all who have failed to honor and preserve life in all its diversity and glory. Forgive us. And all who have allowed relationships to become less important than riches or recognition. Forgive us. And all who continue to exalt our needs and desires over those of others and all who prepare to kill to prove it. Forgive us. And all who have grown blind to all the signs of resurrection that beckon on, that beckon us still. Needs the stone to be rolled away again. We need life to break within us again. We need love to consume us again. Resurrect us today, O Lord, and make us agents of your life wherever dying and grief hold sway. So now as he encouraged us, as we choose to remember so that we too can truly live. At supper on the night before he died, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken so that you may know life. Eat it and remember me. After the meal, Jesus took wine and blessed it. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood, shed so that you may know life. Drink it and remember me. So now, Lord of life, we share in this meal. We celebrate together and we remember you. And we will continue to do this until resurrection has flooded the whole creation. That's me, right? Yeah. I'm missing a form, a sheet. Well, I'll make it up. <laughs> Thanks, Galen. Okay. May this bread and this wine become for us in this moment your life-giving body and blood. 
May we who share this meal be joined with you and with one another as one body united in resurrection life. As we break this bread, we receive Christ's life in all its diversity and all our individuality. And as we share this one loaf, we are one. Christ who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now, as the body, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, singing together. invite the servers to come forward, please, and as well, our ushers. Just a word about how we will be um, handling communion this morning, and that is that we invite folks from the congregation to come forward. The choir will be serving themselves. We invite people to come from the aisles to the center and then down to the front and then return to your seats by the end of your aisle, and the uh, ushers will make sure no one gets ahead of you. (laughs) This is the meal for the people of God. Come, for all is prepared.
Let us pray. God of the bright and morning star, God of the rising sun, God of darkness banished, we praise and worship you. For empty tombs, thank you. For disciples running with good news, thank you. For your presence, alive, powerful, resurrected, thank you. We celebrate your victory over death, over all the powers that would defeat us. Help us to grasp resurrection, to understand its power, to see its force at work in our world, overturning evil empires, changing the hatred within us, moving the world slowly, forcefully, bending us towards love and truth. Today we think of all who are grieving, those who have lost loved ones, those who on this weekend miss a special person in their life, those who anticipate the end that is to come, we offer our prayers. For those who are sick and dying, for those who have had to struggle through cancer treatments or doctor's appointments, for those who are fearful of dying or fear of dying alone, May your presence be known to each and every one of them, that your love might be with them. For the places in the world that are torn by war and bloodshed, in our relative comfort here in Canada, we can only begin to imagine what a day's existence must be like for folk at war with no shelter, with no food, with limited or no water or health assistance. We pray for those who live in fear. And we pray for those who inflict that pain and suffering on others, that somehow their stony hearts might be rolled away and become open to compassion and care. In this moment of silence, hear those prayers of ours that are too deep for words. Holy and resurrected Christ, in this world of broken hopes and dreams, we catch sight of your kingdom come in the person of Jesus, who lives and reigns in us forever. Amen. <clears throat> to those who have joined us in the sanctuary today, whether visitor or regular member, thank you for being present and sharing what you can. You are changing lives with your gifts. On the screen are various ways to share. A reminder that Trinity and Forest Hill are working together, but are still two separate churches with separate finances. If you are not on par or not a regular giver with either church, envelopes are provided in the pew for you to choose to whom you are giving your offering today. So while the offering plates will now be passed, we'd like to share a couple of announcements. And uh, Doug Sullivan, first. Thank you, Dennis. A final invitation to our Model Railway Open House this Saturday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 at 133 Ripplewood. Please, we specially invite our Trinity Nesters, and also please bring your children and grandchildren. Thanks, Dennis. I would invite, yes, those uh, collecting the offering, uh, please um, come forward. Thank you. 
Other announcements for your attention. Forest Hill United Church's Congregational Meeting, Part 3, is next Sunday, April 7th, following the service in the sanctuary. And you are to save this date, Saturday, April 27th. Guess who's coming to dinner? Registration begins today up till April 21st. And you can register on Sundays following this service or register at the church office. And here's another date you are being asked to save. Friday, April 12th at 5 p.m., the next community kitchen dinner. Please register at the office. Community dinner on April 12th will feature a guest chef, Susu, from the Chandler Mowat community will come to cook for us. Some of you may have met Susu when the group from the community center came to serve coffee and cookies at our coffee time after church a few months ago. She is an amazing cook and promises some delicious dishes for us. Hope you are able to join us. There will be sign up after this service today or you can contact the office to register for this meal. And if you are able to help with setup or cleanup, please let us know. There is a sign up list on the bulletin board. All right. Let us stand now and sing the doxology Grateful, found in More Voices number 182 or on the screen. The chorus only. be seated. Let us pray. God of great gifts, this morning we give you praise and we give you thanks. With resurrection humming in our hearts, our minds are tuned to your song of peace. We joyfully present these gifts to you, a tangible chorus of thanksgiving a harmony of hope for your kingdom to come. Amen. And now for our parting hymn from Voices United, number 155, Jesus Christ is risen today.
that's a metaphor. If you lost them already, we're in big trouble. As you go into God's world this week, be an Easter people. Be those who say, why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here, he is risen. Be ready to be surprised that the stone that has held you fast is beginning to move. Look for the risen Christ and those you meet. Let the Holy Spirit nudge you and guide you. The empty tomb is empty because Jesus is out in the world. And now we must go into the world too. May the joy and wonder of that first Easter morning live in your hearts today and every day as you move someone else's stone. Go in peace and go with hope. Amen. Good grief.